So I am super excited to be here. Uh, when I saw they were requesting any participants for lightning talks, I really wanted to jump in. I have gotten really comfortable giving presentations on soft skills. My favorite is nonviolent communication. Uh, but I've been trying to push myself into the tech realm and Vue is just something that I love so much. I've been working with it for almost two years. And my last client, uh, at the end of it, the front end started winding down, so they just started throwing random tasks at me, and one of them was to start implementing translation, internationalization, because they were an international company. Um, so real quick about me, I'm Casey. I like board games, drinking wine, and nonviolent communication. Uh, yeah, so that's my Twitter right there, so feel free to at me about any of that stuff, or if you just want to say hi, or if you're ever in Minneapolis, we'll have to get together. Okay. So why would you want to make the efforts to translate your website? And not to sound rude, but duh. Like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to translate your website? Why wouldn't you want the majority of the world to be able to see what you have created? Um, along with that, uh, aside from the obvious, it, it helped make me a better developer. I'm still pretty new at this. Um, and so when I got into this project, I was doing development for maybe a year. And uh, a lot of my conditionals, a lot of my comparisons were actually just comparing strings to one another. So it was like, if this input equals string, then do this. And so once I started getting into translation, I started realizing you can't compare strings if you're translating it because in one language, the input might equal this, but then in another language, it's gonna equal that. And so you couldn't compare those. So that was something that kind of opened my eyes to that and made my code a lot more dynamic. Um, and then also, looking back on this, it's really easy to retrofit a lot of your code with this kind of stuff, uh, with, with the I-18 and translations. Um, and I think it might be a really good thing for a new team member to do because they literally have to go through all the code and find any hard-coded strings and string map it to the translations. So it really helps them get familiar with your code base. Same with a newer developer. If you have like a junior dev or an intern, this would be a really good way to get them involved. So getting started, pretty, uh, pretty standard. So what we used was the Vue I18 library. Uh, so npm install Vue I18 in. Um, setting it up in the main JS, and I'll show you some code right after this. Uh, and then creating a way to choose the correct browser language. Um, and so you can usually do some sort of like window.locale. In my, in my example, you'll see I, it's hard coded right now just because Wi-Fi, I didn't want to deal with it. Um, and then you create a master engineering English JSON file. I honestly don't know if that's what it would be called in any other language, but basically it's so you're, you have a master key language file. So let's, let's take a look at the code. All right. Does this always, this doesn't always work. There we go, okay. So we have brought it into our main JS right here, this view i 18 in and if anybody has a hard time seeing something, just shout out. I know there's not a lot of interaction, but let me know. Um, so it's being brought into our main JS file there. And then I also have our i 18 in right here. This is where I am setting up the i 18 in um, because you can do this in a lot of different ways, but this is how I'm choosing to do it. So right here, this, cop this uh, commented out um, code right here is where it would be grabbing it from the browser, which the user would need to set up in their browser what language they're using. So that would grab it from there and then uh, we would uh, assign that to a variable, the language variable. So you can see right here, it's depending on whatever language variable, it's, tra it's bringing it into the that language translation file right there. And then there is an else that's like, basically, if we can't find anything, just default to the English. Um, and so right here in this www root folder, we have our languages folder with our engineering English master translations. And so you can see that everything right here has been translated into English. Um, and then if you look at the Spanish translation, the keys on the left-hand side remain the same. And that's where we're gonna be mapping from our component to our translations. And what does change is the data on the right-hand side. That's what's actually being translated. You can use like a third-party service for this. My co the company I worked for used TransFX, where we passed them our master engineering English file, and then they took snippets of that file and matched it to items on the website that, so that they could translate in context. 
And so let me just show you some of this fun stuff right away. Because if I go to this right now, I have it hard coded to English. So you can see that we have our English browser right here. And then if I change it to Spanish, save that. It's in Spanish already. It's so easy. It's so much fun. And then you can see the way that we're doing this is by string mapping. And so this is just the Vue CLI that I just spun up right off the bat. And I, I, all of the hrefs I just moved down to just like a home because there's a lot of yellow on the page and I didn't want it to be overwhelming. Um, so this right here, this uh, dollar sign T, that's the translation um, moniker for the i 18 n translation. So you see that, and then you're doing message.main.guide. The message is defined in here. We're passing in messages. And then the translation file right here, that main.guide. And so a lot of times you can have just one master engineering English file and you can have it broken up into a lot of different pieces where it's like main, and then you could have maybe a page that's about and then have your sub navigations and stuff like that underneath it. So when you do put in those dynamic string mappings right here, it will link directly to uh, that translation, but also provide a little bit of guidance as well. You know that you can find this in main.welcome and not just welcome, so you'd have to search the whole file for that. Uh, so if we see that there, so I'm gonna try to get into a little bit more because it's so much fun. Um, I had somebody actually ask me about uh, inserting variables into strings and we are also to able to do that. So you don't have to have like, if you have a, a sentence that's like, here is my sentence and this is variable and then we continue from here. You don't wanna have that broken into two strings with a variable inserted in the middle, right? You want especially the translator, to see that all in context. So what we do right here is something called uh, component interpol interpolation. Uh, and this is all in the Vue i18 docs. So if I'm leaving you with more questions than answers, that's good. I just wanna get you guys interested in this and hopefully help you dig in even further and see that you can bring this into your own code. Um, and so what we do here is, uh, OMG, this is where I'm gonna test something and place a variable right here. And within those curly brackets, you can put whatever variable name you want right inside this translation. And then inside that, that string mapping, we have our i18 in path right here. And the path is what links us back to that i18 in translation. The testing thing was the key name. And span place is what our variable is. And you remember our var the variable in the curly brackets was called variable. And what we're inserting into that variable is Sorry, this was, I named this stuff horribly. <laughs> was another variable called variable, um, which is a uh, computed variable that's just returning la ha 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 just so you can see it. So you can see right down here, this is the Spanish version of it. So we have that Spanish translation and it still has the variable inserted into that. And it's still saying blah ha 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 because that's the computed that's being returned. And then if you also have uh, HTML inside your strings, you can just do a VHTML, like right here. We have a link in this message main guide. And so you can see that that link is right here in main.guide. And so all you have to do is that VHTML. And if it is linked incorrectly, like if I change this to say guides, You can see right here that it will just show the path. It won't have the translation for it. So it's actually pretty easy to catch if you accidentally map something incorrectly. That was just in case stuff didn't work. Another great thing, I'm not even gonna talk about it too much, but I just wanna tr touch on it, is uh, date, time, and currency translations are baked into this. So you can just define how you would like stuff to be sh like, uh, to be shown in your translation files. And then you just pass in that information using bling D uh, for date or bling N for currency. So it's super exciting. And it is a great thing to add to your websites. Um, and I don't wanna take up too much time. Thank you very much for listening to me and hopefully this will help you bring something back to your project and make it as uh, international as possible. Thank you.